Okay, so welcome to today's live stream. Today we're going to be talking about the difference between uh, what Apple wants to do with spatial audio and uh, its Dolby Atmos and uh, what we can do with ambisonics. Ambisonics are, of course, something that I've done on this channel before and done some videos about. Um, and it's something that uh, I, I still believe is one of the better options uh, for what we're doing if we want to do some immersive audio. And that's partially just because of uh, so many of the features that um, we have with this. And I want to walk through my setup today. I want to actually show you a little bit about uh, what it takes to work with some of this. Um, and a lot of this was spurned on because uh, Logic just recently added spatial audio head tracking, dynamic head tracking, using some of uh, you know the Apple headphones. And um, that really got me thinking because you know I love the Apple headphones. I have a pair of AirPods Pro, um, and um, I think that they're really good. They're really interesting. The noise um, cancellation is really solid, and it's interesting to have the head motion. Um, but there's a few places where, you know, I still really want to be able to have the full 360, uh, which is something that we can do with ambisonics and not necessarily with uh, the Dolby Atmos as it currently stands. Uh, so I just want to walk through some of uh, my own setup showing you how we do that. The main tool I'm using is a, a thing from Waves called NX, and it's this NX Ambisonics thing right here. And um, as you can see, when I move my head, this thing, the head inside here moves. And so the very first thing that you should probably notice is that uh, with Ambisonics, we, we have the full 360 arc means I can look down and uh, experience sound from the, the bottom. Uh, with Dolby Atmos, all you have is the upper hemisphere or the, the, you know, the top rings. And so I, you can look around and, and look up to a certain extent and hear things. But um, with Ambisonics, we have the full 360. And with this particular device that I'm using here, um, it has two parts to it. And I don't know which of these is going to be really worth looking at while um, I'm also live streaming. We'll see if uh, what what works and what doesn't. But this is the device. This is the utility for it right here. It's this little thing. And if you look on top of my headphones, it's this thing on top of my headphones. Uh, and it's what tracks my head motion uh, in the yaw, pitch, and roll type ways so we actually get all of that motion and then um, I'm not going to be able to choose a camera for this I mean I can but it could just crash the whole stream uh, it can also do head tracking with a camera and um, without the little device you can still do this it'll do back and forth to a certain degree but um, with the NX device the head tracker and the camera you can actually do forward and backwards motion too and side to side and up and down. So it adds three more dim dimensions to the whole thing. And, and so it's a really cool device. This thing runs on battery, um, which I go through probably twice a month. And um, it, it does so much more than Ambisonics. It also does the, the studio control room uh, where you can actually listen as if you're in a, in a control room with speakers. And that, that particular feature is amazing. It, it really is good. But this is a, a tool that I need to be able to hear in the 360 realm because um, without it, I don't have speakers that are below me. And I don't have speakers that are above me. And so I need to be able to do this virtually. You can set up ambisonic speakers, uh, rigs. There's a, a variety of different ways to do that, but they're almost all impractical. Um, and so most people are not going to be using the ambisonic speaker version anytime in their home or a car or any other place. In fact, headphones are where it really is a big deal. So don't think that that means that this is something you can't use because, um, for instance, YouTube 
uses ambisonics with their uh, 360 videos uh, and so we can hear the the spatial audio on youtube and there's a version of this with a facebook video and so we're we're probably looking at quite a larger audience just in those two places than spatial audio with apple music is reaching and so I think that there's a, a huge audience for this and a, and a mechanism built in either on your phone, if you're looking at it with the app and you scroll around a 360 video, you're going to hear the audio move if it's uh, you know presented that way. Um, or on an Oculus Quest or other headsets, if you're watching YouTube videos on there and you move around, you'll hear the audio move as well. So... Apple is not the only one doing spatial audio. And in fact, YouTube's been doing this for a number of years before Apple was. And so I think that um, it's a really interesting place. So that all being said, one of the biggest issues I have with Apple and the way they're doing this is that uh, it doesn't yet play nice with a lot of these other apps and things. I can't use the spatial, um, the, the headphone tracking the dynamic headphone tracking of uh, the airpod system in order to see you know the spatial audio of facebook or youtube and so they've, they've kind of walled each other off to a certain extent um, which is unfortunate but it's just the way it is so let me show you a few cool applications just to to get you into this a little bit so now that we've talked a little bit about what i'm using to be able to do this and why the head on the screen right here matches my head motion. I mean, that's that's my head and, and it knows where I am. Um, and there's some other things to customize it, but we don't need to get into the weeds with that particular thing. So I have a couple sounds loaded and uh, one of them is this alchemy patch. And you can see I've got this plugin, again, part of the Waves Ambison Ambisonics bundle. It goes from two to four channels First order ambisonics is a four channel thing. And then you can go up to higher order ambisonics, which gives you more realism. But um, for instance, YouTube just does this first order version with the four channels. Uh, Facebook can do another order up, um, but then you have to, you can't use this tool for that. Um, so let me show you just a couple things with this. One of them is, uh, let me turn on my other camera here. I have a little joystick doo, 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 on my keyboard. And if you look at the joystick paired with um, this uh, plug-in, the, B3, the B360 there, uh, the joystick puts out on continuous control 74 and 71 for the two axes. And so 74, I'm using um, this modifier MIDI effects. And I'm saying I want you to take 74 and reassign it to the B360 rotation. I actually want to pull this maybe down to 100. Let's see, or right there. Um, and so now that's the rotation like that. And then the other one, 71, is going to the elevation, so up and down. So now I can rotate all the way around and go up and down. So that's the, the thing. You're gonna hear uh, like a down, like a binaural mix of that when I push any notes here. Okay, cool. So you can move it all around that sphere. And with this headphone tracking, I can look in any of the directions and hear that from that direction. Uh, and if I bounce this out and pair it with a video file uh, in 360, you can hear it as you move around the video in YouTube or Facebook. And so I think that that's, uh, I mean, it's one step above where we are with the spatial audio from Apple. Um, because we, you can't look down and have any sound coming from below you. 
but with ambisonics you can. Another thing that I think is really interesting is that uh, we have some, a lot, or not a lot, but we have quite a few different ambisonic tools out there right now uh, that are already doing some cool things. And so we haven't quite had uh, the development of the Dolby Atmos type things. For instance, um, I have here on this other instrument track, uh, the bus, going out bus one. And on this channel, I've got it set to a four channel surround. And then I loaded up this uh, Ambiverb, which is from a company called Noisemakers in France. And uh, this is an incredible ambisonics reverb, uh, which means that uh, the sound can come from all directions and be very accurate to the original space. And you can do custom uh, impulses. So this one, I took this picture uh, in a medieval castle in the Czech Republic called Karlstein. Um, and I was able to do an impulse there with a balloon pop and an ambisonics microphone, the H3VR from Zoom. And I was able to take the essence of that spot, which is, this is one of the larger rooms in the castle. And now I can play an instrument, like a flute. Let me turn off this, uh, send for a second. I'm going to put in my breath controller. So Right, so I've got that flute, dry flute. Let's turn on this send to this ambisonics reverb. Nice reverb tail. And so what we have is a medieval lute or flute, um, like a recorder going into a reverb that was created in a medieval castle that's like 700 years old. And now you get to actually hear what this space sounds like um, from wherever you are. But it's also, let's show you the this thing right here, because this uh, metering plugin will also show us where the sounds are. Let me pan it around. Because I can also do the same trick I was doing before with the flute and the joystick. So we can move it around quite a bit. Turn off that video. Okay, so pretty cool system. I think that uh, the the other benefit, though, to the spatial audio right now, of course, is that it comes with Logic and it's installed with Logic. It was a free upgrade, and so far the things I've shown you, the NX Ambisonics, the headphone trackers sometimes on sale for 75 bucks around 100 the software that comes with it for normal stereo stuff and sometimes surround is like another 100 bucks probably and then the ambisonics bundle is a few hundred dollars and then this ambiverb hd is a uh, a few hundred dollars and so we're looking at closer, you know, above 500, between 500 and a thousand dollars to get these tools to be able to do this. Whereas Apple says, you know what, you know, we know that maybe this can't do everything, but um, we're going to pay for it and let everybody else use it for not free, but you know, very minimal cost if you already have a logic setup. And so that becomes one of the things uh, they can because they're not really, 
I mean, they're always trying to make money, right? But they're very good at making money. And so they can take this funnel, this uh, this thing that they've built, and um, they, they make what money they do, but um, they, they get more people to use this stuff because it looks like such a good deal. Uh, the good news is this NX Ambisonics, the B360 plugins, and the other Ambiverb from Noisemakers, those are all Windows compatible. So I guess back to the other side of this, these are tools that um, if you're on, you know, Pro Tools, the ultimate version, or um, if you're, you know, in something else, I don't, you know, Studio One, FL Studio don't really do surround very normally. Um, but Cubase, Nuendo, um, Ableton to a certain extent, if you have the Max MSP stuff on there installed. You know, you can do this in a lot of those other places, but uh, you have to be able to do at least quad audio. So Reaper, you could do this with Reaper really easily. Um, you can't just do this on, on any old DAW because some of them, like Studio One, don't do surround, anything above stereo, which automatically means you can't do any of the cool spatial audio stuff. So with this, and um, I think the, the project that I've been working on uh, is to capture a lot of these different impulses. So I've got this. This is the, the, my working folder of ones that I'm uh, most proud of. I've got this room here in Karlstein Castle. I have Lichtenstein Palace in Prague, which is a concert hall there. And you'll notice a lot of these are in the Czech Republic. Uh, this is a concert hall in a small city called Hradec Králova, um, in, in Osuary, in Kutnohora. This is, you know, where they used to keep the bodies, and um, a church nearby that. And then this is the church right next to the the Osuary I just showed you. This is uh, Saint Barbara Cathedral, and then um, a guard's room at a castle in. Uh, Western Bohemia called Shtekov. But it's like you go through and you can actually create uh, these impulses using ambisonics in a way that uh, you can't as easily do with Dolby Atmos. Sure, we can do surround ones, but these uh, impulses I'm using have things in the horizontal um you know, playing, but also the vertical up and down. And um, with uh, the Atmos, you don't get the down, you just get really the horizontal and a little bit of up. And so I think that for me, in the research I, I like to do with impulses and taking imprints of spaces, and this is, I would say, of the cool locations I've done, this is about half. I have a, I have another about this more this number to to edit and get into the right place there's a church i did in oahu and a concert hall in oahu this past uh a few months ago and i did um uh, another couple churches in the czech republic the one where dvorak was baptized uh, antonin dvorak famous composer and the one where he would have first heard music in his home that he was born in and I've done a church, a couple churches here in Denver, um, cathedral style churches. And um, there's a few others that I need to, to edit and get in here too. But I think that this, uh, this part of this is the, the part that I'm really interested in because I think uh, a, lot of, a lot can be done or incorporated into your own projects. And it's more meaningful when you've actually created part of that or captured part of that. Instead of just using like a default reverb from something, you're able to actually come through and, and do something more meaningful. And so this particular reverb, I think, is amazing for that. This one from Noisemakers, um, because you can just drag in your custom impulses. Uh, so let's do like the, the Ossuary for a second. And if you put the image in the same folder with the exact same name, 
that actually gets pulled in. Uh, that's why you can see the image change here. And let's change the instrument here, because I don't want to do that flute for a second. Um, let's do, let's see, we have, what else do we have from the Middle Ages here? Not much. But we could do like an organ. I think an organ could be really fun for this. So let's type in our Baroque or organ. So we need to add on our stereo to Ambisonics plugin here. That's fine. Uh, we have our sends. Ooh, let's let's go back out here just to that one and turn the other one off. And let's see what it sounds like. So. long reverb. I'm going to try a different one though for a second. I want to see, ah, hold on, let me pull that out of the way. Because that one is actually having a little bit, it looks like it, that particular file may need to be updated because it wasn't doing the vertical. I think that's the reverb fault though, not the actual impulse. So you can pull in any of these. There's the guard chamber. There we go. Boom. We're pushing the input of that one a little bit too much. up with the unity and pull the sun down. And then look at the reverb as it moves around that room. We're going to change our view here to like a side view. updated them I'm just pulling from the wrong folder but I think they were all about the same so let's just see if any of these other ones are going to do the vertical or if I need to go find the originals yeah because you see this is just uh, there's no up and down information in there So I need to find the original files because those ones right there are not the correct ones. Let's see which of these. No, not those. So Liechtenstein Palace. That one has all the information. is an organ hall I mean you can see there's an organ in the front of that room so this is you know one of the purposes of this particular concert hall is the organ
And just again, to give you a little context, here's... That's the organ without the reverb. I think I will set that back to post fader. So I see a comment from Mark about the only sound that is in stereo so far is your voice. The organ is only heard in my right side. Interesting. That could just be a blip from... Well, it's showing on both meters for my system here. So I don't know if that's just a YouTube live stream thing that's having an issue. Um, really, this is something that we should be listening to in a different way over if we're going to do this over headphones through something like audio movers or something. But um, thanks for letting me know. It's uh, it's more a conceptual discussion apparently than a, than actually hearing um, the original source material. I'll have to check that out once the recording is posted and see just what came through the recording. But... Uh, I will say this is a huge flaw. I mean, not flaw. It's a, I think it's a decision made by YouTube when you're doing live streams not to be able to do the spatial audio. However, I think that's a huge missed opportunity because I really feel like it would be awesome to be able to live stream in 360 audio. And, and so far that that's just not, um, that's just not a thing which is lame. Well, I think this was um, more of a, a real niche stream. I, I don't know if we're going to get that many views on this particular type of thing because I feel like, uh, you know, this is something that is certainly a little bit more uh, narrow in, in what people are interested in. I know for a fact that uh, spatial audio is not a really popular topic. Um, I can tell you that just because of, you know, statistics I see on my channel. And um, I think that that's, that's too bad in some ways. I wish people didn't just lash out and say it's, you know, it's stupid. Most of the people who say it's dumb don't actually have the ability to hear it uh, and have never really given it a fair chance. They just, you know, it's like, when audio became stereo and everyone said that was dumb. No one now says stereo audio is dumb anymore. Um, if we had to go back to mono, I think a lot of people would be like, I can't do what I need to do. And so I think that every time there's change and growth that, you know, people kind of resist that, uh, which is kind of sad in its own way. But um, at the same time, I think uh, hopefully it'll be something that, that uh, gets better and people get more open to it. But don't just assume because Apple says that you should be doing Atmos with spatial audio that it's the only thing. Uh, and Ambisonics, uh, there's a whole support system for it, and I think that um, it's really interesting. Okay, we're going to pull the plug on the stream. Uh, thanks for those of you who have watched. And um, we will be doing another stream tomorrow on something a little bit less esoteric and uh, a little bit less niche. And um, hopefully we'll, we'll draw a little bit of a crowd. So see you later.